Most improved player of the year favorite Jordan Poole made his postseason debut in typically eye-popping fashion, posting a cool 30-piece on the Nuggets. Bench Stephen Curry scored 16 points in 22 minutes while being a game's second best plus 17. Draymond Green had three blocks and was first in plus minus in game one of the West Quarter Finals against the Mile High City. This video shows you how the Golden State Warriors resembled their early season selves and put on a clinic in game one against Denver. Right before that, just 10.4% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. Jordan Poole would be a starter on about any other team in the association, but of course, he usually plays behind debatably the greatest point guard of all time in Stephen Curry. While Jordan got the start in Game 1, with Curry opting to come off the bench in his return from injury, after Game 1 against Denver, Malika Andrews asked this tough question. Are you going to give Steve Kerr a hard time about the starting lineup now? No comment. <laughs> that interview also saw Jordan reveal how he's been prepping mentally for this moment for years. Uh, waited two years for this, asked a lot of questions. Luckily, I have a lot of amazing vets who are uh, experienced who've been here before who are able to help me. So um, they just told me to continue to play my game, be me, and just be ready for the moment. As Malika mentioned before that, Poole became just the 35th player in the 75 year history of the NBA to score 30 points in their playoff debut and the third player in Warriors franchise history to achieve that. On one of the dub's first possessions with 10 seconds left on the shot clock after a handoff and slip screen from Kevon Looney, watch how perfectly placed this strong, no-nonsense two-handed pocket pass from Deadpool is. It's not a dime that'll make SportsCenter, but all that matters is Jordan gave his big man the best chance to finish. Next, with Draymond at the top of the key, Poole displays his Stephen Curry-esque ability to move without the ball and execute Steve Kerr's advanced play sets. Jordan first cuts over to the weak side to set the cross screen, and when Wiggins receives it in the post, Poole catches the defense napping, elusively shuffling back to the right wing, calling for a pass, and receiving it instantly like it's my career, nailing a near 30-footer from around the chase logo. Then, coming off an on-ball screen that doesn't make too much contact from Bialica, contests like this one on Poole's Kobe Bryant mid-range fadeaway simply aren't going to make a difference. At this point, Denver became 100% incensed on taking away Jordan's jumper, and while I can't blame Malone's defense for this blow-by off a quick first step, on the next play, the Nuggets make it way too easy. All it takes for Poole to get a wide-open layup after cutting to the basket is a fake pin-down on Cousins, someone's gotta turn up the difficulty. A fake crossover to his right and momentum cross and smooth jumper off the dribble in a screen and roll is followed up by this merciless take to the basket on a fast break. Again, Jordan pulls off that little shifty double crossover, bursting into the lane and Euro-stepping like he's D-Wade, acrobatically finishing on the left side with his strong hand. The other side of the court sees Poole display why he owned the second best defensive rating at his position. Right here, he clamps up Will Barton who throws it away, and Draymond ends up finding Jordan on the left wing in transition for a beastly deep range bomb. That range is both unteachable and unstoppable, and we're witnessing quite the talent in Jordan Poole step onto the scene. The key to Golden State's blowout in the opening game of 2022's postseason was not only how they held Jokic to 18 percentage points below his regular season true shooting mark, but how they attacked him offensively. Steve Kerr focused in on the Nuggets' habit for playing Jokic in drop coverages, forcing the soon-to-be two-time MVP to defend in space. No dubs player took advantage of Jokic in this coverage better than Jordan Poole, who finished with 30 points on 13 shots, 4 of 6 on 2s, 5 of 7 on 3s, 69-71-88 shooting splits, and a ridiculous 90.8% true shooting mark. Jordan started in lieu of Stephen Curry, as it was Steph's request to come off the bench and find a rhythm after returning from his injury. JP more than lived up to expectations in the starting five, mimicking what Curry's done throughout his storied playoff career, reading over-committed defensive game plans by making slick dime droppings out of the pick and roll to relieve the pressure. Golden State also saw flashes of early season wigs, as my fellow Torontonian had 16 points, 9 rebounds, 2 assists, and a steal shooting 6 for 11 from the floor. Despite Curry continuing to get his legs up to where they were before his injury, Steph finished with 16 points on 5 of 13 shooting, 
The three-man combination of Curry, Poole, and Thompson played just a small sample size of seven minutes against the Nuggets, but in that time, they outscored opponents by a whopping 29.4 points per 100 possessions, which included an offensive rating of 141.2. Regardless of the starting five, Kerr decides to whip out going into game two, Poole starting with Curry on the bench or vice versa. It's crucial Golden State's man in charge, Steve Kerr, keeps that Steph, Jordan, and Clay big three on the floor and gives them significant minutes together against the Nuggets team that seems to have no legitimate counterpunch for them. Draymond Green had an incredible offensive night and showed as much poise and aggressiveness with the ball as we'd seen all season. He had 12 points, taking just seven shots, and went five of seven, hitting a three, getting a three-point play, and periodically exploiting giant pockets of space created by Poole, Thompson, and Curry. Dre's nine dimes don't tell the whole story, as Green had plenty of hockey assists where he threw the pass that led to the assist, and he didn't turn the ball over once. Plus, he showed he could take threes over Nikola Jokic, which is going to be huge going forward. Andre Iguodala didn't score once in his 13 minutes and only took one shot, but he had four dimes, two rebounds, and a block, and the best dime droppings of the game, a game that included two Wizards in Nikola Jokic and Steph Curry. Andre's best no-look didn't even go down as an assist, a no-look behind the back to Otto Porter Jr. in the corner, where he missed a three. Porter scored only four points, but he played really damn well, as he was tied for a game high with Draymond as a plus 21 in 25 minutes. Suddenly, the Dubs bench looks dominant, and that's with rookie phenom Jonathan Kaminga relegated to the end of the bench for now, an incredibly potent emergency reserve. Then, of course, there was Klay Thompson, who came out hot, hitting three of his five triples in the first quarter and scoring nine points. He finished with 19 points, 14 before halftime, and after some very early hiccups where he missed badly and turned the ball over, it was the same playoff play Warriors fans have come to expect. He even had a very feisty back and forth with Aaron Gordon. They both drew a double technical on that play. But I want to know in your opinion, what made the Warriors most dominant in game one? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video. Shout out top five commenters by June 21st. Receive free NBA merchandise this summer. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Boston Haltane, who says after giving an in-depth analysis, from my standpoint, I see the Celts winning the series in six to seven games. After this, I see them getting to the conference finals with how deep their rotation is, but eventually falling in the conference or NBA finals. I can't wait to see how this Celtics team goes in the playoffs with how their previous runs have ended and being a big Jason Tatum fan. I hope he and his team can silence any doubters and bring their historic franchise to their 22nd finals appearance. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.